cataract surgery in eyes with iris coloboma is a challenging task and here we have this patient who had significant cataract and this patient had visual diminution and intolerable glare for which cataract surgery was planned so this is the fundus photograph and the point which we can appreciate is that the macula and fovea and the disc are just uninvolved so we expect a good visual gain so the issues with these colobomatous eyes are primarily that the anterior chamber and the eye itself is small and shallow the cornea is small and there may be a lens coloboma or the zonular deficiency in the part where the coloboma is there apart from these if the eye has a large choroidal coloboma then that choroidal coloboma may actually compromise the final visual outcome as well so most of the surgeons are reluctant to operate these cases and as a result these patients the surgery is quite delayed and we may have a patient who had quite an advanced cataract because of these reasons and operating these cataracts is primarily difficult because the pupil is eccentric and the coloboma which extends in the inferior part the superior iris is overhanging over the lens and that makes the surgical approach little difficult so here we are which we have made an incision and we have given intracameral lignocaine and instilled 2% methylcellulose in the anterior chamber and are proceeding for a capsulorhexis the capsulorhexis has to be centered over the visible area of the pupil because otherwise the superior part of the capsule is just not exposed and the pupillary area is little eccentric when compared to a normal eye so the chamber is shallow so there is continuously you have to form the chamber and these patients may also have more strong bells phenomena and blepharo spasm so they cooperate little less one more thing is important that these patients may have asymmetry in both the eyes although this patient had nearly symmetrical coloboma in both the eyes so more so the asymmetry causes the delay on the part of the patient to take a decision because they don't want to take that risk associated with any surgery so they purposefully delay the surgery till the vision is really incapacitating the capsular excess has been finished and it's a round centered excess over the dilated pupil and we expect that this eye can accommodate a standard size foldable eye ul although this again may be a issue in eyes which are smaller there may be a situation that it is nearly impossible to accommodate a full size iol which is commercially available doing hydrodissection is important because there may be a zonular deficiency in the inferior part where the coloboma summit is there and as a result there may be presence of vitreous there and the surgery may be complicated because of the vitreous prolapse occurring through that zonular defect so once we are ready for phacomussification i am planning to use primarily the horizontal chop technique and we can see the change in the glow which is visible because of now the glow is coming through the colobomatous area now when the eyeball has been tilted downwards removing the overlying cortex and apart from this we will also see few challenges during the surgery which i purposefully wanted to share because any one of us who is operating these cases may get in a situation where these tips may help rotating the nucleus chopping it into smaller pieces so that we have manageable fragments
of the nucleus chopping it further till now the surgery seems very much assuring and manageable i don't see any prolapse of the vitreous anywhere especially the columbomatous area which is the biggest dread because if the vitreous starts prolapsing from that area it will simply enlarge the opening because as much as vitreous prolapses out it will stretch the opening and you will have a large defect in the zonular area it will damage the remaining zonules also and the bag may shift superiorly in a way that it is impossible to implant iol properly in the bag one can use a capsular tension ring in these eyes but then again the size may be a limiting issue because these lenses the crystalline lens the eye everything is smaller than what a normal adult eye would be like whenever any surgeon will take up these cases he has to discuss the issues which are associated with his eyes and the surgical complication which one can be expected it's very important otherwise the patient will be grossly dissatisfied after the complication occurs then the outcome is not as expected so nucleus has been removed and because the anterior chamber is very shallow we can expect iris prolapse here which will occur now and again because the iris is very close to the incision site although the incision is nicely designed it has a good length going for removal of cortex so the cortex removal is done in a manner that you engage the anterior end of the lens fiber which is lying underneath the capsular excess border and you pull it and the rest of the fiber which is overlying the posterior capsule will simply get peeled so this way you can remain safely away from the posterior capsule and still manage to clean up the bag with no residual cortex the problem arises when the anterior part of the cortex is consumed and the posterior surface or the posterior end of the fiber which is overlying the posterior capsule remains then one has to reach up to the posterior capsule and peel that membrane being very close to the posterior capsule and we all can understand that integrity of the posterior capsule is very important for safe placement of iol intraocular lens and also to prevent any other complication associated with posterior capsular tear and vitreous prolapse now here i can appreciate the problem that the chamber is shallow and the reach is very limited and one is very apprehensive about possibility of a posterior capsular tear now in this position when i am reaching down towards the posterior capsule i could see a converging line forming which prompted me that maybe there is a posterior capsular tear here so this is the point where i have to change my strategy and we'll see what goes next so these two converging lines which are converging towards the coloboma may be a posterior capsular tear apprehending that i have put in viscoelastic and brought out my phaco probe but now there is another issue the increased pressure in the anterior chamber and shallow anterior chamber has prompted the prolapse of iris so this adds one more dimension to the problem and this iris refuses to go back in spite of my trying to burp the anterior chamber and relieve the increase in trochlear pressure now i also don't want to shallow the ac too much because then i know that vitreous is bound to come up if there is a posterior capsular tear so very gradually allowing the anterior chamber to get decompressed 
and at the same moment pushing in the iris so that my wound is stabilized and sealed and the iris is brought into its position. By now the iris tissue has reacted to the handling and we can appreciate the pupil has become much smaller and this has caused to hiding of the residual cortex in the superior subincisional area. Reaching out to remove the remaining cortex but now Reaching up to the anterior end of the lens fibers is impossible because that area is covered by the iris now because the pupil has become smaller. So I'm trying to peel this cortex from the posterior capsular surface which appears normal now after verifying, after checking it and putting in viscoelastic one can see the signs if there is a posterior capsular tear or not and I can appreciate that there is no tear. Now learning my lesson that iris prolapse can occur, I have sealed the anterior chamber before exiting out so that there is no iris prolapse. Putting in viscoelastic to form the chamber, now I have to contemplate how to remove this residual subincisional cortex which is coming up to the center of the pupil. This cannot be left behind because it will ultimately get opacified and result into a obstruction in the visual axis. So what I have decided is that put in the IOL safely in the bag that will keep my posterior capsule and colobomatous area well protected against any manipulation which I have to do to remove this cortex. So this is a foldable monofocal IOL which has gone, the leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic can be dialed into its appropriate location. And at this moment we can appreciate that the cortex is now underlying underneath the IOL sandwich between the IOL and the posterior capsule. The iris is also misbehaving so we have to repeatedly burp the anterior chamber and then deposit the iris. So we can see there is some amount of complication which has occurred which is traumatizing the iris tissue. Now trying to dial the IOL into the capsular bag. So this is a four level monofocal hydrophobic IOL. The haptics are little rigid but still they go nicely into the bag. Now this maneuver I am trying to sweep the, the cortical matter over and above the IOL so that it is not trapped underneath the IOL. So now we have the cortical matter which is overlying the IOL and it is easier for me to access it. Going ahead to remove it and the problem is same. That the cortex is hidden by the overlying iris surface. So I am now trying to make another opening which will make my access to the cortex easier. So this could have been facilitated in a situation where I would have chosen to make use by manual irrigation aspiration. Using that probably the task would have been easier. But this is another strategy which I used and I have made an incision at the opposite meridian so as to reach for this cortex. Now this way my access to this cortical matter is going to be much easy. Going underneath the pupillary plane to engage the cortical matter and extracting it out. Now at this moment we can see the iris has started prolapsing again. It actually aided me in reaching up to the cortex because now the cortical matter was well exposed because the pupil has been stretched because of the iris prolapse. So I actually was bothered by this iris prolapse and trauma to the iris tissue but it was making my job 
of removing the cortical matter much easier. So there is a large chunk of cortex which has been aspirated now and the bag is now completely empty of the cortical matter and now the only issue is reposit this iris and see what has happened to the iris tissue. In this situation where you handle the iris this much it gets shredded, it gets devoid of the pigment and it may become translucent and all these factors will not have a sight threatening or a serious side effect in the eye but it may make the iris look little cosmetically unappealing. So again using the same technique you press the posterior lip let the pressure be relieved and then you push the iris in. I am using a serrated forcep which has a large surface and a blunt end and it is easier for me to deposit the iris by burping the anterior chamber contents and also to push the iris tissue back. Patient is little uncooperative but then it is possible because by coaxing the patient to keep the eye in desired direction I was able to manage. Hydrating the wound and forming the anterior chamber and also checking if there is any iris prolapse at this moment. Surgery has been done. The anterior chamber is well formed. The IOL is in the bag in its place and the iris seems really okay. This is the day one picture where we can appreciate that the cornea is clear. We can appreciate the cataract is gone and the IOL seems to be in place. Superiorly the iris which was traumatized doesn't appear very translucent on this photograph and that area is actually covered by the lid also but overall the outcome is satisfactory as I can see. Thank you.